Hello, and welcome aboard the USS Smarty Pants, a spacecraft designed to boldly podcast where no man or woman has podcast before. Right now, we're drifting toward the outer edge of the solar system, about 10 billion kilometers away from the sun, just beyond the planet Neptune, in a ring of ice and rocks known as the Kuiper Belt. I'm about to head down to the surface of Eris, a space object known as a dwarf planet. Beam me down, Smarty. I'm now standing on the surface of the dwarf planet Eris. Uh, this can't be right. I see blue skies, green grass, and chirping birds. Animals are dancing all around me. (laughs) Something is definitely off. Scientists say the dwarf planet Eris is supposed to be dark and extremely cold, hundreds of degrees below zero. They believe that Eris' atmosphere usually freezes and collapses, falling like snow. But I'm seeing sunshine and clouds and lots of life, including several short creatures walking towards me. Hi ho! Hi ho! It's off to work! Whoa! Everyone stop! We seem to have a visitor. Please identify yourself. Why, I'm the trusty narrator and captain of the USS Smarty Pants. I'm from Earth. Who, may I ask, are you? We're the dwarfs of the dwarf planet Eris. My name's Kaipi, and this is Icy, Stellar, Rock, Frosty, Allergy, and Hubble. We're headed to that forest with the prince. Hello! To see if he can wake up Snowy Girl, who passed out after eating bad fruit. No, 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 this isn't right. You shouldn't be here. Really? We live here. You're the one who beamed down in a funny yellow shirt. I'm sorry, I meant I didn't expect to see anyone here. Well, Eris is a dwarf planet. Yes, but a dwarf planet is not a planet full of dwarfs. Oh, really? Then what exactly is a dwarf planet? Good question. Smarty Pants, do you know? What makes dwarf planets different than other planets? And how many dwarf planets are there? And why was the most famous dwarf planet kicked out of the planet club? Later, Pluto! It's time for another whiff of science on... Who's smarted? Who's smarted? Who's smart? Is it you? Is it me? Is it science? Or history? Listen up! Everyone, we make smarting lots of fun on Who's Smarted? Okay, Smarty Pants, as you probably know, we didn't really go to the Kuiper Belt and set foot on Eris. And no, there are no dwarfs like the ones from Snow White living there. In truth, Eris is very cold, very dark, and very, very, very far away. How far? Take the distance from the Earth to the Sun and multiply that by 68. (gasps) Eris' massive distance from Earth is the reason why it took so long to discover it. But when astronomers first spotted Eris in 2003, it sparked a huge debate in the scientific community and led to the creation of the term dwarf planet. Now, Tell me, how many planets are there? Ah, most of you said eight, and a few said nine. Well, if you said eight, you're right. Technically. Huh? That ninth planet, discovered in 1930, is a small one, smaller even than our moon, named Pluto. Ah. The name Pluto was actually suggested by an 11-year-old girl. Whoa. Do you know why she chose Pluto? Is it A, the Greek god of slobber? (laughs) B, the Roman god of the underworld. Or C, Mickey Mouse's pet dog. Did you say C? Well, that is not the correct answer. In fact, Walt Disney may have named Mickey Mouse's dog after the former planet. Pluto, formerly known as a planet, gets its name from the Roman god of the underworld because of its dark and cold nature. Dark, cold... And lonely. I miss the good old days. When I was a planet and people cared about me. Before they kicked me out. Um, hey, Pluto, I I was about to get into how you lost your planet status, but if it's too upsetting to talk about it, I I can do it another time. No, go on, don't mind me. Not that anybody does anymore. (laughs) Okay. So when Eris was first discovered in 2003, astronomers first labeled it the 10th planet. 
since it's about the same size as Pluto. But there are lots of small objects just like Eris and Pluto in that faraway region of space called the Kuiper Belt. Would they all have to be called planets too? Suddenly, Pluto didn't seem so unique anymore, and scientists felt it belonged more with the other Kuiper Belt objects than the planets. But uh, I am unique. M- my orbit is tilted, and sometimes I'm closer to the sun than Neptune. And compared to Earth, I, I spin backwards and on my side. Ooh. But nobody cares. Those are cool characteristics, Pluto. But are they really enough to make you a planet? It didn't matter before. <sighs> Ah, oh, go on. After the discovery of Eris, the group that creates official names for space stuff, the International Astronomical Union, or IAU, felt that they had to redefine the term planet. So in 2006, the IAU announced new rules and a new classification, the dwarf planet. Yay! No, 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 not you. Boo. So what exactly makes a planet a planet and a dwarf planet a dwarf planet? For that answer, Let's go bowling. Let's say the solar system is like a bowling alley. You've got your lanes and you got your pins. To be a planet, you gotta stay in your lane. And the lanes, of course, are orbits around the sun. It's also the first rule of planets. If you don't orbit the sun, you can't play. Hey, let me in. I'm trying to bowl. Read the sign, pal. No nebulas. Moons don't cut it either, since they orbit other objects. But having an orbit around the sun alone does not make you a planet. You may have a lane, but you still need to bowl the right way. And if you're a rough shape, like an asteroid, you're gonna have a rough time. What? Just because I got some rough edges, I can't be a planet? Nope, asteroids can't be planets. A planet needs to be a certain shape, the same shape as a bowling ball. Can you say what it is? That's right. It's the next rule of planets. You need to be round. Uh, well, actually, the Earth isn't technically round. It's an oblate spheroid, which means it's larger at the center equator and smaller at the north and south poles. Fine. Round-ish. Asteroids aren't even that. Now, if you orbit the sun, are not a moon, and you're roundish, congratulations! You're at the very least a dwarf planet. But there's one more requirement to become a full-fledged planet, one that astronomers often argue about. The IAU says a planet's orbit must be clear of any objects of a similar size. In other words, you gotta knock down all the pins. For all the other planets, that's not a problem. Unfortunately for Pluto, this is the part that's tricky. It's like bowling with a golf ball. Oh, please, please, please knock over the pins. No! And that's the problem with Pluto. Unlike other planets, Pluto isn't large enough or its gravity powerful enough to shoo away everything from its orbit. It's surrounded by lots of objects around its size in the Kuiper Belt. And that's why the IAU made Pluto a dwarf planet. Ah. Some astronomers don't like this rule, but the IAU is sticking with it. I'll get you, IAU. You haven't heard the last of Pluto. Actually, you're not the first object to lose planet status. Uh, I'm not? Nope. The sun and the moon were planets longer than you were. (gasps) The ancient Greeks called them that and they remained planets until the 1500s. In 1801, when Ceres was discovered between Mars and Jupiter, it was also considered a planet. Ah. But astronomers changed that when they discovered lots of other objects in the same region. Smarty pants, do you know what they ended up calling Ceres? Yep, an asteroid. That is, until 2006, when Ceres, which is round like Pluto, also became a dwarf planet. Okay, that makes me feel a little better. 
knowing I'm not alone. Oh, not at all. In fact, many astronomers are excited about the fact that there may be hundreds, if not thousands, of dwarf planets out there waiting to be discovered. Smarty Pants, any guesses how many dwarf planets there are right now? Is it A, 5, B, 65, or C, more than 735? Oh, wow. Could there actually be more than 735 of us? We could throw a big dwarf planet party. Well, maybe. According to astronomer Mike Brown, the person who discovered Eris, astronomers have discovered at least 741 objects that could be dwarf planets. But officially, there are only a five dwarf planets so far. Only five? Yep, there's you, Ceres, and Eris, and two other dwarf planets we haven't mentioned yet, Haumea and Makemake. They're also in the Kuiper Belt. The IAU hasn't officially named any more dwarf planets in more than 10 years. More than 10 years? (laughs) You know what that means? Uh, no. What does it mean? That means people have stopped caring about us. (laughs) No, 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 that's not true. In fact, a short time ago, you made history. Really? What happened? I'll tell you, right after this quick break. Now back to Who Smarted. I'm here with the dwarf planet Pluto, who's pretty upset that they're no longer considered a planet. No, I'm fine. Really. I don't think you're fooling anyone, Pluto. (laughs) How could you tell? Well, besides the fact that you've been crying throughout the episode, there is also the pictures. Pictures? What pictures? The images of you showing a big patch of ice shaped like a heart on your surface. You're practically wearing your heart on your sleeve for everyone to see. Wait, how did you get pictures of me? From the New Horizons unmanned space probe. You recently made history as the first dwarf planet to be explored by spacecraft. It took New Horizons nine years to travel over three billion miles to get to you. But it was worth the wait. The pictures are spectacular. And Smarty Pants, you can find them yourselves right on NASA's website. Nine years? Billions of miles? Just to see... Me? That must mean you like me. You really like me. That's right. Uh, You you think I'm cool? Definitely. Cold, in fact. And I'm named after a Roman god? Yes, but... Aw, yeah. Take that, Neptune. Woohoo! I don't have the heart to tell him Neptune's named after a Roman god, too. Shh. It'll be our secret. Us dwarves won't say nothing either. Because you're not real. Oh, never mind. Beam me up, Smarty. A big shout out to Zach in Fairbanks, Alaska. So glad you love to listen to Who Smarted Way Up North. This episode, Dwarf Planets was written by Dave Beaudry and voiced by Jason Williams, Taya Garland, Max Kamaski, and Jerry Kolber. Technical direction and sound design by Josh Hahn. Who Smarted is recorded and mixed at the Relic Room Studios. Our associate producer is Max Kamaski. The theme song is by Brian Suarez, with lyrics written and performed by Adam Tex Davis. Who Smarted was created and produced by Adam Tex Davis and Jerry Kolber. This is an Atomic Entertainment production.